Hey guys. The reason I love terrariums so much is because they make plant care simple and like a lot less maintenance in my opinion. Of course you have to go through the steps to set up your initial terrarium. Once you have it set up, then they are really easy to keep going and happy. Plants tend to thrive in them, at least in my experience anyway. So I do like to put some more finicky kind of plants or plants that like to stay well watered, humid, moist, whatever, those kinds of plants, you know the plants I'm talking about, in terrariums because then I'm not having to like water them as frequently or be as hands-on with the plant. So yeah, um, yeah. Let's build a terrarium. Really with terrariums, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. I tend to go for a more simple approach. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. For my terrarium, I'm actually going to be using a ZooMed creature habitat kit. This was on sale at my local pet store. So I bought it because I thought it would make a good terrarium. And what I like about it is it has a mesh lid. Uh, so it still has like a little bit of airflow, but not much. So this is not a closed terrarium. You could definitely get one that isn't mesh on top. If you want your plant to stay a little more humid, I'm going to be putting a syngonium into this. So I don't want it to be too humid. Frosted heart syngonium will be living in here. And I guess first I need to take off the stickers. I should have done this before. Oh, they're very stuck on there. Here we go. Oh man, how am I supposed to get this off? Oh. That's gonna bug me. That's not working, is it? That's not working. I don't have any glue gone, so I don't know how to get this off. Ah! Probably scaring my chickens. They're just right outside the door here. Whatever, that's as good as it's getting right now. I do not want to deal with it, so we're just gonna live with it. Okay, I'm gonna take the lid off. And yeah, where was I? I'm gonna set it up as if it was a closed terrarium, although you really don't have to if you have some sort of airflow, like the mesh lid here. But yeah, if it is a closed terrarium, make sure you're using charcoal, <laughs> otherwise you will end up with lots of mold. First up, you can use fewer layers if you want. I personally like the look of layers. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a layer of sand. This is actually chick grit, <laughs> but it's basically sand, like little tiny rocks. I'm gonna add that to the bottom. This is a step you can totally skip if you'd like to, but I like the look of it so, so that it's sloped. You see? You see what I'm doing there? just so that we'll be able to see the sand layer. And again, this is one, this is a step you can totally skip if you want to. All right, I have my sand layer. And if you don't wanna do the sand thing, you can always put like Lekka balls at the bottom. You can put stones or pebbles. You can honestly just like kind of skip it and start with the charcoal step if you want. Although it does get a little bit messy once you get some water at the bottom mixed in with the charcoal, the charcoal gets soft. But yeah, I'm gonna go in with charcoal next. I have two different thicknesses of charcoal. You do not have to use both thicknesses. I am just going to because I'm going for, I don't know, just because I like the look of it, you know? Ooh, I love that smell. Oh, it smells like campfire. I'm going camping tomorrow. Me and my sister are taking the boys. Just kind of spreading it out a little bit so that it's like even, evenly distributed on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go in with my smaller pieces of charcoal. You really only need one layer. And now we're gonna add in our sphagnum moss. So my sphagnum moss is mixed with a little bit of perlite, but you can just use regular sphagnum moss if you want. It is dampened to the point where I have to squeeze really, let's see if I can, squeeze really, really hard. Oh yeah, to get water out. Um, so not too wet where if you like barely touch it, water comes out. You wanna have to be able to squeeze it, you know? And I'm just gonna put like kind of a thick layer of it. This is where I'm gonna like directly pot my plants. You can also add a layer of soil if you'd like to. That's just not my jam, you know? I'm all about the sphagnum moss and I do think it helps hold in humidity really, really well. I've ended up with issues with soil more often than not in terrariums with the high humidity, but that is just me. I am no expert, you know? Okay, you know, maybe I'm gonna go get a few more plants. Am I gonna get a few more plants? I think I am. Ooh. 
Oh, this is fun. Okay, one sec. Okay, so I'm actually gonna take my plants out of their little cups so that they can have more room to grow. I kind of sloped it so that this plant will stand highest in the back. I think I need to pull off this oldest leaf. It's kind of yellowing. So we're just gonna pull it off and say goodbye to that. Just kind of dig it in and stick it in there. You, you can mess with the root ball if you'd like to. If not, that's great too. There we go. Peperomia do really, really well in terrariums and you know how much, well, okay, if you watch any of my other videos, you know how much I love Peperomia, but I struggle with them so much. I do not know why. A lot of you guys said that you struggle with Peperomia also. I feel like people either, like there's no in between, you know, people either really are good with them or really not good with them. I don't know, maybe I'm just making, I'm probably just making that up. So yeah, I'm just adding a little bit more moss to help hold everything up. You really can put any plants in a terrarium with, within reason. Like you can't really put like succulents. I mean, you can put succulents in a terrarium type thing, but it just needs to be with, they need to be with other types of succulents so that you can keep it really dry, you know? Um, so you just kind of have to change your care of them based on that. How's that looking? Does that look good? I think I like it. And then I also have some living sphagnum moss with a monstera dubia and then some sort of fern growing in the cup that I'm just gonna stick in the front here because this is a shingle plant. It'll shingle all over the place, kind of climb all over, I think. And then I also have another shingler, which is a Raphidophora hongkongensis. This is just a cutting, so I'm just gonna like stick it in the back here so that it can grow wild. Well, I'm hoping it'll grow wild anyway. I want it to kind of take over. And then I'm gonna pull this baby out. The roots aren't that deep. So I'm actually just gonna pull, oh yeah, kind of a fresh cutting. Hopefully you're just gonna put it here in the front. These sphagnum moss, I am just gonna kind of set it in there like so. Oh, what do you think? I'll show you a closer up when I'm done. Do I wanna add some rocks? How's that look? You don't have to add rocks also. I'm just doing it to kind of break it up because it's just like there's the green plants and then the golden brownie colored moss. Maybe one more. What, is, what does that look like? Oh, yes, I think, it, I think it looks cute. That's that. So really the only layers you need, if it's a closed terrarium, you need charcoal, planting substrate, if you wanna keep it as simple as you can. Ideally, you would have like rocks at the bottom, charcoal, and then sphagnum moss. If it's an open terrarium, then really the sky's the limit. You could even just put sphagnum in there only if you wanted where there is airflow you don't have to worry as much about mold but the charcoal is a nice little bet i'll tell you what that's an easy terrarium setup pretty inexpensive i'll have everything i used linked down below water this thing oh i should also say i really i got this tool this one helps a lot where it is so long um, but I do like it to add a little bit of moisture reserve around the bottom and really be able to decide where the water's gonna go and drop it exactly where I want the water. It's not super important, but I do think it makes it a little bit easier sometimes. Um, I am just gonna add a little bit of water down there. Maybe I'll put it along the top so that all the water runs down and you can actually see. There we go. But yeah, it is very, very helpful. It's like super inexpensive, just a few bucks. So if you're really into terrariums, I do think it's worth the few dollars that these cost so that you can really control where you're putting that water. Because if not, sometimes you can make it kind of a mess. And if you're just like dumping water in, it can also sometimes mess up what you've um, put together depending on what kind of setup you have going on. And then as far as terrarium care goes, so so number one, nutrient wise, I do like to wet my sphagnum moss with liquider water. So I have a full video on liquider. If you wanna try liquider out, my code is harleyg underscore 25 for 25% off your liquider order. But if you don't wanna try out liquider, then there are other options out there as well. I don't know, whatever fertilizer or plant food you wanna use to give your plants nutrients, go ahead and do that. Add some of that in. You can mix it up with the water. The thing I like about liquider is it's really easy to use. Like I could mix it up and then pour it into this mister every time I go to mist my terrarium and add nutrients in that way. You can do it in, out of a regular waterer thing and use your little, what's this called? 
not a syringe. Is it called a syringe? Dropper. This is called a dropper, right? You can do that as well. So just make sure that every once in a while you are fertilizing your plants because it is very important. And I would say even more so in a terrarium environment because with higher, hum most plants want higher humidity and with that higher humidity, they are most likely going to be expending energy growing more quickly and larger. So yes, definitely want to make sure you are fertilizing your plants, feeding your plants in your terrarium. Okay. So this is where my terrarium is going to be living. I have several of these lights, I, light stand things that you are seeing on screen now. And I personally love them. Um, you can adjust the height of this. Obviously my shelf is only so high. So I mean, that's how I can do it, but it does go higher. It does, it does go taller as well, if that's something you need. They're just very adjustable, work really well. And I think that they are definitely worth the money. They aren't like, they definitely aren't the cheapest option out there, but I think they do their job well. They look really nice. You can use them for regular potted plants or little terrariums like this. I don't know, I just really like them. So again, this is more of a splurge and totally not necessary for your terrariums. You can use window light if you'd like, but where I'm keeping this somewhere a little bit further from the light than I think these specific plant varieties would like. I don't know, there's just something about this I really love. So like, there's it with the light and there's it without. You see the difference there? I don't know, I just think it looks a lot better. Really makes your terrarium stand out. So I love these, like I said, I have several of them. Highly, highly recommend. I think they're around $60, I could be wrong. Uh, of course you can do whatever grow lights you personally like. This is just what I personally like. And it looks so good especially the light. Ooh, the light just does something, you know, don't you think? I should say you, you are definitely going to want to make sure that you don't let it dry out too much. So really when I like to, when I like to add water to my terrariums is when the moss starts to get a little bit dry. You can tell, I wish I had some dried moss here, but Dried moss is lighter in color, and then when it's dampened, it's a little bit dark. So keep an eye on the moss, and it'll tell you when you should probably think about adding more water to the thingy, the terrarium. Okay, so that is it for this video. If you have any terrarium questions, please leave them down below. I had fun setting up this terrarium, this really quick, easy terrarium. I mean, I think all the footage I got, it's like 20 minutes total. So this is gonna be a really short video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see my next one. Ah! Oh, did you just hear that?